All right, welcome back to uh, Hanaki Bicycles. We're going to continue on the single speed conversion. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is replace or install the new Shimano BBUN54 bottom bracket. Let's see if it'll focus in on that. Uh, come on. There we go. BBUN54. All right. This goes in the bottom bracket. Oops. Bottom bracket area, as you can see, on the bike. And whenever you install this stuff, oh, it's very important to use grease. A little toothpick with the grease, like I used on the shocks. It's always good to put a little grease on the threads, just so nothing seizes in the future. If you ever want to change it out to a, a, a more high-end bottom bracket, like the 19 millimeter ones with the hollow axle, you know, if you want to switch over to something like that, you got to change this. You get it all greased up. And you say, it says clearly on the label here, left and right. The left side has the adjuster on there. And the, the right side is fixed. So I put the left on the left and the right on the right. And it also should say the direction that it spins. Well, this one doesn't say the other model does. But uh, if you look at the threads, generally these things tighten the way that you pedal them. So the right side is righty tighty, lefty loosey. And the left side is opposite. That one goes backwards. Get that all started on there. And you, yes, you do need a special tool to uh, get these cinched up in there. Use the rag. The tool that you need is uh, this Park Tool bottom bracket tool, BBT 22. Uh, if you can see that. There you go. It's got the, the splines on it that match that of the bottom bracket that you're using so get that thing all thought I had this one threaded get it started in there come on besides being a pain there we go get it threaded get it going run it run the right side down all the way that's the side that is fixed with the uh with the bearings and the axle in it. Get that one down snug. Grab your favorite 12 inch crescent wrench. You can also use a 3 8 drive ratchet on here, but I find that this works better. Get that on there. Get it uh, nice and tight. Then you go to the left side and uh, you turn counterclockwise, run that one down as tight as it'll go. And then you want the cup to be flush with the bottom bracket on this side. So you might run it down so it's not too tight. You don't want to, you know, ram this side on. This one's different than the other one. You just want to get it to where it's about flush. And it should get snug right there, like this one did. You put the tool away, because you always put the tools away. And then from that point, we get our arms. We got these older Bond Trager arms right here. Bam. This is set up for a three-piece crank, but we're only going to use one crank or one chain ring. Now, I'm probably going to end up getting a little bit bigger. This is a 32. I think I'm going to end up putting a 36 on there. And I'm going to run a bash ring on the outside. But we're installing the arms for now. All right, there's a square in on here, and a square in on here. So once again, grease up those areas. Just a little bit of grease right inside the hole there. Just just enough to prevent this stuff from seizing. Because you know, one day you're gonna want to upgrade or just change it, try something else. Slide those on there like this. Do them both at once and just smack them a little bit. Then you get your your bolts 
These are your crank arm bolts. These ones happen to be two separate pieces. The bolt screws in and then this is like a lock ring that goes over the top. It has threads on the outside of it. Which is a cool feature about these or on these uh these Bontrager crank arms here. I'm not even sure which model these are. These are pretty old though. These are from like 2005 or something. So we'll get those on there, get them started. And I think this is a 8mm Allen key. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. Yeah, 8mm. Run that down real quick. Just so it's strong, I don't need to ram it on there yet. And then get the other side. I like to do everything in pairs that way. You know, we don't leave anything behind. And then you can ram it on this one. I found the slides on pretty far. So it takes a few cranks to get it all the way onto that uh, square end. This side, not so much. This one's pretty much where it needs to be. You can use the arms uh, for leverage. All right, now you take your little lock rings, which have little holes, if you can see them on there. That's how you uh, tighten these things up. You can use a pair of pliers or a hook or something. I like to use a hook myself, just like this, right here, Matco hook, see the little hook, Ooh, stick it in the hole. And run it around inside the hole there. Be careful not to scratch it up. I mean, it's going to get scratched eventually. But run it down nice and tight. Do the other side. And these are regular righty tighty lefty loosies. There's nothing weird about these. And then get your hook in the hole. Run it in, run it in. Get that one all nice and snug. And, uh, there you go, there's the bottom bracket and the crank arms on. Uh, I already have my, my pedals on there. These are Ascent SPD style pedals. Just had those on there. I like, I like the clipping pedals. Alright, you get your chain. I'm not going to use this chain on this bike. It's just kind of here for right now. I'm going to end up getting a half link chain because it has a little bit more adjustability in it. And I can't quite get this chain to where. I want it to be where I can get the proper amount of adjustment out of my tensioner. And, uh, yeah, see, it's, that's all my tension right there. And I can't get another link out of it, so I'm going to have to go with the half link chain and try to get it the right size. Alright, well, uh, this part's almost done. The next installment will be setting the chain up and adjusting it to the proper length with the tensioner. Alright. Thank you for watching.